All right, really wish I'd prepared an intro for this one, but let me just explain what I'm going to be doing. It's the end of year wrap up video. It's not something I've done before. I don't think I have anyway. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this year, kind of run out of time to make a proper video, but in making this one, there's quite a bit in here. So you might enjoy some of this, hopefully. I'm going to be looking back at some of the videos I've done during 2022, the most popular or perhaps the most interesting ones to me, and I'll show some clips from those. I'll talk around them, maybe fill in a bit more information than you're already aware of, and um, also give you a bit of behind the scenes information about what's going on here uh, throughout this year, 2022, and then on into 2023, what my plans are. So with all that laid out, let's get started. It's not very Christmassy in here though, is it? I really should have put some lights up or something. I haven't put a tree up this year or any decorations in the house because I've been away most of December and it seems silly just to put stuff up and then take it down again a week later. So it's the least Christmassy I've ever been, but I've got this thing. Hold on, let me just switch this on. I think I've just hit the microphone there. That'll annoy you. Um, this is a little flashing. It's not looking good on the camera, is it? It's not very good, that. No, hardly showing up at all. A little LED thing that ledgenial.de sent me a couple of years ago. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. It's a nice little sort of flashy badge, not that you can see it. Uh, too many lights in here, you see, that's the thing. I've got my studio lights on and you can't see anything. Uh, but uh, let me just turn this on. This is, this is silly. I bought this in a flying tiger shop while I was on holiday. I think it was one in Lisbon. Um, but uh, it's... It, it's weird because it doesn't make any sense when you think about it. It's it's a fireplace in a television, a fake one, which is a nice little effect, which is what attracted me to it. But the whole idea behind it is just illogical because do you remember when you used to get those DVDs and they had a fireplace on them and then it went into Blu-rays and things and screensavers and whatever. It was something to put on your TV. Well, this is kind of replicating that. So what it's replicated is a fake tire, sorry, a fake fire on a TV, and then it's a fake one of those. It's it's multiple levels of fake. But anyway, that's my Christmas uh, spirit there for you. So without any further ado, a phrase that I've said way too many times, uh, let's look at the first video that I want to show you. Just a quick clip. And uh, things got off to a pretty good start in 2022. This was the first video of the year. Okay, I'm just going to put this back on the top. I'm not going to screw it in place yet because I want to make sure that everything's working first. Now, the intro to that, the bit when I was walking along holding the cord machine in my hand, um, I originally intended to do an effect on that where it was just the cord machine in bright red and everything else in black and white, but my editing package wasn't really up to the task. I tried quite a few different ways of doing it and it didn't look right. So in the end, it wasn't uh, the way I intended. Uh, of course, people have taken that clip and put it into like YouTube poop videos and think that, oh, look, this makes him look silly. And the whole thing is I was supposed to look silly. I was intending to look ridiculous myself. So it's kind of nicking something that's supposed to look silly. Then say, hey, look, this looks silly. It's like, yeah, it, it did in the first place. But anyway, you know, some of those are quite funny. Some are just very repetitive. Anyway, moving on, the next video I want to show you very quickly is one about a CD player. So let's have a look at that. The SLP 1200 came out in 1986. It was sold as a professional CD player. So for those who are interested, let me tell you all about it and what makes it different from your normal consumer machine. I'm not doing a fake effect here and turning around when I don't need to. I am actually watching them on here to see if anything jogs my mind first. So uh, I am watching them and then commentating on them. That video, um, I, I still use a, I'm still using that CD player and uh, it's very good, I like it. I did get another unusual CD player after that and I haven't made a video on that one yet because it's got so many features. I need to spend a bit of time getting familiar with it myself and I just haven't had the time this year. So there will be another unusual CD player appearing some point in perhaps the next few months on the channel. Uh, but uh, that, not just yet. The next one I'm going to show you. Oh yeah, uh, just something with a cassette in it. There was always something with a cassette on this channel and I think this is the first one of the year. 
like an unusual looking walk with that, isn't it? We've got a lot going on in here. Okay, I think I'll try this somewhere else. Nobody expects windows to talk, so they don't, as a matter of course, go around knocking on them to receive information. But this thing feels like an ancestor to the QR code. I mean, it's something that you see in the real world that doesn't do anything until you interact with it. And then when you do, you get served pre-prepared information that's more often than not relating to the things it's been stuck on. Yeah, made a bit of a boo-boo with that one, I think, in that video. Uh, I didn't realise, because the instructions weren't very clear, that it wasn't really something where you had to tap it to activate it. It was like a proximity sensor. I'm still not too sure how it worked when it was behind glass, but yeah, uh, if you actually put your hand near it, it would set it off. There was always a bit of a delay, so it kind of confused me a little bit. So that's why I was tapping. Also, I noticed it kept going off when I was trying to set it up. I thought it must be dead sensitive, but no, it's just the proximity thing. But anyway, that was the uh, magic moving, no, magic message machine. Uh, interesting little thing. Never seen one before. You might not have done either. And I thought it was worth sharing. Now, what's up next? Oh, yeah, another cassette based thing, a rather unusual Walkman. Possibly one of the rarest Sony Walkmans ever made. This machine is not suitable for ordinary domestic use and is protected with a security alarm device. So if you have used one of these yourself in the past, if you've handed them out to visitors at some location you were working at, or you know anything more about them, then please let us know in the comments. Yeah, now with that one, there was very little to go on. So I opened it out, hoping to get some more information from people that watch the video. Uh, sometimes these go out to quite a wide audience and somewhere in there there might be someone that's familiar with the thing. With this one I think there were a couple of people got in touch and it turned out that my suppositions as to how it was used were kind of right and a little bit wrong. The idea being that there'd be certain uh, locations, I think somebody mentioned a castle somewhere or other, and um, you'd be handed out one of these cassette players and it would have a cassette in it that taught you around the castle. And what happened is there'd be a frequency on the tape that you wouldn't hear, but that would activate the pause on the device. I was thinking at the time it was to do with the location, uh, but I think that was another side of things I'll mention in a second. But the idea would be that you'd have this tape in here, you'd put your headphones on and you'd be going around a castle and say, this is the grand hall where King Henry the Fifth or whatever ate his food and then beheaded everyone or something. And then the tape would pause and then you better like walk around, have a good look at the exhibits and some uh, things like that. And then when you were ready to go on to the next location, you would press the button to resume. And then the next bit would be played out to you uh, about, you know, and this is the uh, grand dining room type of thing, you know, and then it would pause again. And you'd lead yourself through the place. It was a, a, a tour type device. The cassette that I had in the video, the one that had Tudor music on it, that had the same branding as the cassette player, that was something that was given out, well, sold in the gift shops as a bit of a, uh, just a memento of the event. It was nothing really to do with the player itself. It was for you to take home and, and listen to your Tudor music in your car stereo. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned about the location, there was like a, a device in there that seemed to, pause it, deactivate it. I think that was just my modem that was uh, giving out the frequency that were the same as the one that would have been on the cassette to pause it. But there was a bit of an aerial type thing in there. And he did mention on the back about there being a, 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 an anti-theft device. And that's a bit like one of those things that you get in clothes. You know, if you walk through the thing at the end, it would beep at you to tell you that you'd forgotten to hand back in your uh, Walkman. So that's what that was about. It was like a little a bit of foil type of stuff in there. Uh, so yeah, we learned a bit more about that afterwards. Interesting little device. And uh, let's move on to the next one. Oh yeah, uh, I thought I'd hit the big time. Sony sent me something. Sony have sent me over a pair of their new Link Buds designed with the intention of all day wear in mind. Uh, hopefully they'll send me stuff again in the future, but we'll see after this because I am going to be completely honest here. I'm not in the sales business. I'm not trying to sell these on behalf of Sony. I'm just talking about them. And uh, I've got to be honest, they're not really my cup of tea. <laughs> and as you can predict, Sony never got in touch with me ever again. Well, up until this point. But then again, if all that they could come up with is Bluetooth earbuds, they could shove them because I'm not interested in those anyway. Uh, those ones I found uncomfortable, just personal opinion. I really did try and get used to them after making that video because they didn't need them back and I had them here. I thought, oh, I'll try and get used to it. Could not bear wearing them. Very uncomfortable. 
different things for different people. Some people love them. Not criticising the product. I was just saying in the video that I didn't like them and I still don't. So I was just telling the truth. I'm not some kind of PR shill. Unfortunately, by me saying that, I think I've been struck off the list. They'll never send me anything again. But if that's all they can come up with anyway, they can, they can keep it. Bring me back the Sony of the 1980s and 90s. Bring out something interesting and then get in touch. And maybe I'll have a look at it. But no promises. <laughs> I sound like some big shot, but I don't care. I've got my own stuff. I can get hold of it. I'll, I'll buy it. Don't worry. Um, next thing is something I did buy. It is the Jaycock Z400S. What's that? Well, let's have a look. Now this is effectively just a normal arcade poker machine, albeit one that's been shrunken down into this small case. We can see everything that there is on here, or at least everything we're allowed to see, because you'll notice they put stickers over the tops of these chips. And if you were to remove those stickers, you wouldn't see any more because if you look to the sides of them, you can see they've scraped off the details from the top of the chips as well. So what's the most obscure colour handheld, portable, rechargeable games console that you can remember from 1991? The answer is the Jaycock Z400S. Now again, this was something that we learned a bit more about after the video, at least I did. Um, in the comments there, there were some people that recognised the chips that were used in there as being the same ones that were used in the portable PC Engine games console. And in fact, it just looked like this thing was the, is it the PC Engine Turbo, no, the GT, anyway, you're yeah, the portable one with the screen on it. We noticed the screen on this was particularly good for the time. And it just looks like they got one of those portable PC engines and sort of took it all apart and put it into a new case. Another thing I learned after the video uh, was with regard to the credit system. The way that this thing was supposed to be used, it would be, it's kind of an illegal device in a way, hence the reuse of an existing piece of technology with all the chips names scrubbed off. Kind of a, a black market type product, but also used as, as an illegal gambling device in Japan in say karaoke bars or hostess bars that kind of thing and the person would go in and they'd get this off the bartender and they give them a certain amount of yen and the, the credits would be added to the device and then they'd gamble the poker game and then at the end of it the credits that are shown on the screen hand it back bartender person gives you any money you've won now, the way that the credits were added, I was thinking that the bottom was opened up and it was these buttons at the bottom that could add it. But what actually happened was the key on the side, every time you turned it, it added 100 credits, I think it was. Um, and that was how the money was added. So you'd, you'd give them a certain number of things, they'd turn the coin a certain number of times, take the, sorry, turn the key a certain number of times, take the key out, then that's how the credits were added into it. So uh, learnt a little bit more about how it was used. Nobody recalls using one of them, and of course it's all a little bit Japanese and weird, so there won't be many people watching this who has ever encountered something like that. But nice to learn that it was really just a, a PC engine in there, and if, uh, if somebody knew what they were doing, they could possibly get PC engine games to run on this thing. I mean, the graphics, I'm sure the, the software was just some sort of PC engine poker game that was, that was modified in some way. Anyway, moving on from that, next thing, uh, the most popular video of the year. It's hard to believe that this thing actually came out with a screen of this quality. It's non-backlit, it's got 16 grey scales, and the video is running at 15 frames per second. Does your video player have a super bright screen? No, no it doesn't. This is a terrible quality screen. Much better things were available back then. In fact, let me just get my Game Boy Micro. The only device I've got from this year, just to give you a bit of a comparison as to what kind of screens were available around about 2004, 2005. But it was good enough for what it was intended for, and that was to entertain children. Well, that and sell them a load of extra discs and things. Now, it's not often you know a video is going to be a hit, but based on my previous videos about hit clips and pocket rockers, I knew that that would be in the same kind of area. And both of those were very successful as far as views go. So I knew that that one would be a hit. I'd had it in the background sort of waiting to be deployed at a certain time. Not that I'd made the video, but I got all the equipment together. And then a chap got in touch and sent me the black and white version, which is what tipped me over the edge into getting the whole thing put together. Of course, I sent it back. It was just a loader. But uh, without the black and white one, I wouldn't be able to do the whole story. And I didn't want to just start on the, uh, the colour version. 
so yeah, big hit. Um, 1.4 million views on that one during the year. You need these hits every now and then to keep the whole ship afloat, really, because a lot of the previous videos, even the ones that I like that I've shown you, didn't really uh, have a sort of breakout success. One thing with YouTube videos is you can kind of keep the same type of number of views for each one, depending upon the subscribers and the number of subscribers that click and the ratio and all that. And, you, and I might get 100,000, 200,000 views a video type thing over and over again. And then uh, you'll get one of these one and a half million type of ones. And that's because it just broke out of that 200,000. Just even I've got a million and a bit subscribers, I'll still only normally get like 200,000 views on things. But if say more people who are subscribers were to click on it, they might get it into 300,000. And then when it kind of gets to that number, YouTube thinks, oh, this is popular. Let's start recommending it out. And that's when these big numbers come in. So it'd be nice if that happened more often. Uh, so yeah, if you're a subscriber and uh, you don't watch every video, just, just sort of pretend you do. Stick it on in the background, go and do something else. And it might just tip it over that number that really helps me out every now and then. But that, that's all the kind of begging I'm doing. Oh, I suppose if I'm in the begging mode, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It just helps out. I don't get money per subscriber or anything like that, but it's just YouTube sort of sees, oh, this channel has this many subscribers. Uh, maybe we should recommend these videos to more people. It, it all helps and it doesn't cost you anything just to click that subscribe button. That's the only time I've mentioned it this year. It's right at the end of the year. I'm not going to mention it again for another 12 months. So uh, no high pressure here. Right, so the next one is a nice little thing that I enjoyed, uh, the Tonys. Put your Tony on the top of the Tony box, it will play back the audio that's associated with the Tony. Let's try this one. Ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden. So I'll pick this one up because it looks as close as I could get to myself. We've got the white hair and the glasses there. Now I included that one, uh, not that it was some kind of standout video that I made of an amazing thing. It was a very nice little charming product. It's something that people have seen around quite a lot during 2022. When I did that video, it wasn't all that familiar. Uh, now you see it in quite a lot of shops. They seem to have got the distribution sorted out. It was more of a, a German device and then it's been spread around the world and that people in the US and where else, elsewhere I should say, have got in touch and said, oh, I saw one of these in the shop, just like in the, your video. They're always sending me pictures of places they've seen them, you know, Target and, and places like that. Yeah, they're all over the place now. It's quite, uh, quite a popular thing. There are other devices that do a similar type of thing to it, but it's just nice with the little figurines. And talking of the figurines, I, uh, you might recognize this little fella here. Uh, that's the uh, Tony that I showed in the video. I'll, I'll show you up close there. Let's get him focused. There we go. He's got um, a Velcro beard that I put on him. And uh, I took a picture of it like that. And then I did some modifications because I thought I'm, I'm kind of scared. I, I don't know if they're a bit funny about the copyright and all that. So his ears are removed. His sort of grey helmet thing was took off and, you know, did it in a photo editing package, put a new shirt on him. So it doesn't look much like the original now, but it was just the impetus to get a little character. And you'll have noticed him popping up in the corner of the videos. In fact, I'll do it now. And it's a great little tool for me now because when I've made a video, I'll put it out on YouTube. Well, and then I'll put that as an unlisted video. The Patreons who uh, support the channel, the patrons on there, they get to see the videos early because I like to show them the video. And if there's anything wrong with it or something that I haven't explained very well or something that people feel is missing or too long or etc. etc. Basically, this is the first draft. It'll go out on there and I'll get the feedback on from the patron people as to things that could make the video better. And sometimes the things that I can edit around or, or, or change in the actual video itself, sometimes it's just a matter of putting a little person on at the bottom corner to clarify something that in my head I was kind of thinking about, but I didn't actually verbalise and therefore the viewer might be a bit confused. So I'll, he kind of speaks my thoughts in the corner of the screen sometimes. Very handy little thing and uh, I'm glad I did that. So uh, it was worth getting the Tonys just for that. Now let's move on to the oldest format that I've featured this year, and in fact, the oldest one that I've ever featured on the channel. The Nameless Dreamers, and they put their music out on an Edison cylinder. I mean, it's on here, but how many people are going to be able to play that?
But just a side note here, cylinders are the only music format, pre-recorded music format, that I can comfortably play the audio from on this channel without fear of hitting a content match. The name of my famous master is on my body and tells you that I am a genuine Edison photograph. Yeah, now whilst that is the oldest music format that I've shown on the channel, it's the oldest one that I'm able to play, it's not the oldest one I've had some kind of effect on. I just want to show you something. You might remember the Teffy phone. That's how it's supposed to be pronounced. 1950s German music playing device. I'll just play you a little clip of the track that I found on it when I was demonstrating it in a video a few years ago. Right, so that was Cuba Bion. That's all it said on the label. It didn't mention who it was by or any more information about it. And I put that out in the video and I used that track because it didn't hit a content match. Now, fortunately, it won't do because of German copyright law being different to the US. When that was recorded, it's now fallen into the public domain. So I'm able to use that without it hitting any content matches. But that track that I used, and we ended up finding out some more about it later. I made a little video just for the patrons all about uh, where it came from and who it was by. But by me uploading that clip there and using it in subsequent videos when I did the puppet outros and other clips like that, um, that track, people started to like it and re-record it. I got Anders Enger Jensen to do a, a MIDI version of it as well. And uh, it's, it's spread all over the internet. Well, not all over, but you'll find it, quite, if you search for Cuba Bion, you'll find a lot about it. And the very first time that anyone heard about it was when it was played in my video. I'll say the very first time since the 1950s. It's on a LP as well. There's a stereo version, which is like a fake stereo and a mono version. And it's on this German compilation album that people keep finding and say, look what I found. Yeah, I know I've got it as well. Uh, but it turned out the Teffy phone version was playing a little bit quick but everyone's copied the Tefifone version as the official version now. So it's played a kind of semi-octave higher or something. It sounds more cheery anyway. It sounds better than the one that's on the actual proper vinyl LP. But what I wanted to mention was, whilst uh, that track now has got out there and been spread around, it's a nice, f fun track. Well, somebody has put it on the oldest format that I'd ever be able to show you, I think. It's on punched cards. I'm going to play you a little tiny clip out of this video, but I'm going to also link to this in the video description. Yeah, so it's ended up on a Dutch street organ. It sounds like it was made for it as well. Again, link to that video in the description. I'll pop it up at the top of the screen. I think the reason it ended up on there, though, is because before I realised that it had fallen into the public domain, I was a little bit concerned about it hitting content matches when I used that track. So I asked Ang Anders Enger Jensen to do a version for me in MIDI, which he kindly did. And then that MIDI version, I think, is the one that they've modified to be able to be played on this street organ. But yeah, that is literally the oldest music format that I could probably show you in a video, even though it's not really mine. But yeah, link to it in the description. Right, moving on. The next thing is just something that I'd been waiting for for quite some time and uh, I'd prepared for it for a couple of years. Uh, let me show you this. This Kickstarter has finally arrived. It's been about two years since I've backed this. It's the M90 Mini and Micro Bluetooth Boom Boxes from New Wave Toys. If you don't know what the M90 is, well, it's that thing behind me there. Right, so there you go. That's the complete family. Yeah, so that was the Victor M90 in the background there, the large one, the original one, and then comparing it to the Bluetooth speaker versions that came out in the last year. Uh, very nice little things, those, and uh, they've been doing special editions of those since. Initially, when they put that Kickstarter out, they showed a load of silhouettes of different boom boxes. 
and they were planning on doing a um, series of them. I don't know whether they're still planning on doing that. That first one took a lot longer to come out than they, they anticipated. And indeed, I bought my Victor M90 with the idea being that I was going to compare it against these models when they came out, all these replicas. And I thought it would be very soon after it arrived that I'd be able to do that. As it was, it was a couple of years later. But that's what spurred me on to get that big boombox, which I featured in a previous video, and you might have seen it uh, demonstrated. Um, yeah, so I ended up getting some more boomboxes. I've got another couple that I think might be ones that they would do in their replica range if they carry on doing them. But I'll show them anyway at some point in the future. Then if and when they do be getting more models out, we can compare the two or three or whatever they do. Right, so let's move on now. The next one, one of my favourite things uh, that I like to cover. There aren't too many of these left that I haven't covered. I've got a couple, I think, left personally, and I might find some more, uh, a background music player. Now, I've got to say, I really do appreciate this lovely, clean look. It's simple, functional, but effective design. It's just got nice straight lines. It's a bit Dieter Rams in a way. So I'm just gonna leave it running. I'm gonna go off and do some other things and then I'll come back later on, have a look at the footage I've recorded and I'll find out how long one of these tapes plays for. Now there's one criticism that I get a lot, and that's people saying, your videos are too long. You've took too long to get to the point. I'll get lots of people putting like timestamps. Uh, demonstration starts at 10 minutes 32. The videos that I do, I like to have a bit of a story around them, a bit of background, a bit of information, rather than just saying, here's an unboxing, here's a thing, there we go, I don't know anything about it, can't tell you anything about it. Look, it's plastic, it's got buttons on it, I don't know what they do. I like to surround it with some information. But obviously not everyone likes that. It's funny, you know, the ones who put the timestamp on, they don't realise that the videos already have chapters on and it's timestamped by me to start with. So I don't know, maybe people just don't know how to use YouTube. But there's a lot of people that complain about the videos being too long. So with that in mind, for this video, I made an abridged version. So you can see that now. Today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at this Philips background music system. Right, so here we go. That's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Right now, obviously that was supposed to be silly. I don't think everyone quite got the joke, but the idea was that it was showing that if you cut something down to just the bare minimum, the entertainment disappears with it as well. And the background is what's needed to make the thing interesting. But anyway, uh, if they'd just watched that impatient version, they would have missed out on the name that tune part at the end of the full length video. And a lot of people seem to enjoy that. Let me just play a little clip from there. Okay, so moving on to the next one, we're looking at the play away. This is a little audiobook player that when I started making this video, I thought this was something from the past. I remembered seeing these in an airport and I picked up some on eBay a number of years ago, thinking that it was an interesting little gadget from the past that of course nowadays people listen to their audiobooks on Audible or, or download them by whatever means. So I thought, oh, look at this little unusual device audiobook, only one player. There you go. Turns out when I started making the video, I looked on the website just to get some more information and they were still selling them. And that led the video down a whole different path. It's like, how can this product still exist? Well, the answer was libraries. It's the Pelican Brief, the novel by John Grisham, and it's complete and unabridged. Not a bad little interface, really. And it would be difficult to see it until it was almost to the pier. Very easy to use. This is the kind of thing you could quite easily pop into your pocket. A lot easier than even the paperback version. So yeah, convenient little format. You don't have to have a smartphone and a data plan and a subscription to an audiobook service. It's all just here. Just loan that out. When you're finished, pass it back. I'll pass it on to somebody else that wants to listen to it. 
rather than the smartphone killing it, it gave it a reason to exist. Yeah, so the latest books were still coming out on this device. The device had changed over the years, but it was a way of physically lending a copy of a book, which is quite important because it's all about checking things in, checking things out with libraries, perhaps out and then in. I might have done that the other way around. But you get the idea. You want something you can actually lend. Now, in the days of cassettes or CDs, you could lend those out and you could get them back in. And of course, you count the number of times it's been lent. There's all sorts of weird things that go along with it. One of the things that a lot of people didn't understand was when I went on about the price, because there used to be the kind of price that you could just pay like, I don't know, 20 odd dollars or something to pick one of these things up, maybe a bit more at an airport. When it changed over because people started getting into audiobooks, that business model disappeared. And the one that exists now is one where the prices are set for libraries. So they're quite expensive. This sort of 60, 80, you know, that kind of thing. They're up there. And a lot of people say, how can they charge this much for it? This is ridiculous. But what a lot of people just didn't realise is that libraries don't pay the same price for a book that you or I do. They're not paying the off-the-shelf paperback price and then lending that out. In amongst that library system, there's a licensing deal. So it might be like five times the price of the book because the idea is the author, the publishing house, are selling one copy of the book at five times the price and then the library is lending it out multiple times and that was the deal that's been set. If the publishers just said, oh, you can get it for $5.99 paperback price, then obviously that book could be lent out to 100 people and they're losing a lot of money that way. So yeah. Uh, the next one, well, worst performing video of the year, the, the least viewed video, and it was about a head cam. I'm going to take a look at the Audro EP8 head cam and if you can't already guess it's this thing on the side of my head here it's a 4k 60 camera with built-in stabilization and it's that aspect of the camera following you around rather than it being attached to a particular vehicle that would come in handy for a chap who got in touch with me not too long ago and he wanted to know what kind of camera to buy and his job was to deliver vehicles. Right, now people often ask me why I don't feature little cameras anymore. I used to make videos about little spy cameras, little gadget cameras, uh, dash cameras, that kind of thing. The reason is because the audience isn't there anymore. I'd still make the videos if people still liked watching them and yes, there are some people who watch them but that video got 100,000 views and it was in the early half of the year. And it took me as long as to make that one as it would to make any other video. In fact, I took that away with me and shot over a few weeks, a few different interesting little clips. I thought this will be interesting. People like seeing clips of Cardiff and stuff. As it is, not many people watched it, like 100,000 or something. I say and that video of the um, video now, that was one and a half million views. So it just shows you the difference. You know, it's if you're spending a week, 10 days making a video, you'd be better off spending that time making a, a video that more people would want to see. As it is off the back of that, the next video, I thought, well, I need a hit now because this is getting a bit slim pickings. So I went back to the toys again. It seems like people like the retro toys, but of course they've got to have some kind of AV angle with me to be interested to me as well. So with that in mind, I took a look at 2XL. Does this fella here look familiar? Not me, this chap. If he does, if you remember one of these from your childhood, you might be a similar age to myself. 78, that's when this came out, 1978. This is 2XL. So this is really the heart of the 2XL, this section here. Which show has moon base alpha? I will give you three choices. Is the show A, Star Trek, B, Space 1999, or C, UFO? The correct answer was B, and unfortunately, you have chosen C. So you get the idea, it's a little bit like one of those choose-your-own-adventure books. But please try again. Choose A, B, or C now. I didn't notice my battery had gone off. Let me turn it on again. The creator of 2XL saw that video, not that he got in touch with me, but I saw a, an article that he put out as a press release on the something anniversary of that product's coming out. And he linked back to that video saying that like there was this popular video that 
featured the product. So uh, he's still alive and well, and uh, he saw that video. So I thought it was quite nice. Um, it was a, a video where I enjoyed the product. I uh, thought it was very inventive and clever. And uh, hopefully he enjoy watching my video. So it's, let's all pat each other on the back. Uh, but moving on from that, um, I, I don't know if these all follow sequentially in the um, video releases. There was, in total, I think there was 50 videos approximately for 2022 I put out and I'm only showing a handful of them here so there are gaps in between but the next one I'm going to show you is another one that features eight track cartridges. That's possibly the largest cartridge door on anything ever and as you can see in there all the heads are in a row. There are a total of five for five eight track cartridges. So that's plain cartridge two and then three, and then four. Now I've got a lot of criticism on that one because I adjusted the speed by putting tape on the uh, motor pulley which then adjusted the diameter of it and adjusted the speed. A lot of people wanted me to use step down um, power transformers with side wave converters and this, that and the other. I've done a lot in the past. I've done videos featuring those and I've also got other devices in the house that can do that. But I just wanted to show that technique as uh, another alternative. You, know, you don't just want to do the same thing every time. As it was with that machine, I only needed to get it working properly for that one video and the one that follows, which is the one I'm going to mention next, because I wanted to demonstrate some cartridges in this particular system. I wanted a multi-cart changer. When it comes to playing eight tracks, I've got a single cart machine, which is just fine, which is much better quality than this. As it was, that device developed another fault a couple of weeks later so it only really lasted long enough to show it in these two videos i could go back and try and repair it but it's not a, a great device it's an interesting device but it's not as good as an all eight track player but the next video i was demonstrating eight tracks in here towards the end but the, i'm going to show you the beginning of the video the more uh, important part the reason the video existed there was a chap called mike got in touch with me and he wanted me to see if i could copy him some kenny everett NAB carts across, DJ carts. Uh, so let's have a look. So here we go. This is the first time this cart has been played for perhaps 45 years. When you need rhythm on your radio, please let me tell you where you are to go. It's on the medium wave on 257. When lots of music sending you into heaven. Now, in between me saying yes to Mike that I could copy his carts across because I've got a stereo cart player and him sending them, I plugged my cart player in and it blew up. Uh, I think it was my fault. I think I might have put the wrong voltage into it. It said it was multi-voltage on the back, but I don't think it actually was. It was mislabeled. Anyway, as a result, I killed it. So I had to get one urgently and I spent a lot of time looking around and they're very expensive, proper DJ cart players in stereo, at least they are in the UK. They're heavy things as well, difficult to ship. I got some chapter to send me one from the US. There was just one on sale on eBay. He sent it over. It was a little bit faulty in that the uh, mechanism sometimes needed a, the lid removing and you kind of had to force it up with your finger, but it was enough to be able to demonstrate it in that video. And after making that video, the chap who sold it to me recognized it in the video and got in touch and said, oh, watch your videos. I saw my old cart machine in there. So again, another bit of a connection. But moving on to the next one, Eight tracks again. I'm not obsessed about them, but it just seems that I've sort of had a few videos in a row that covered a, a similar thing. I think one kind of led on to the other. Uh, this one, I was talking about a Japanese and the eight track and how the, the eight track had become successful over there, which seemed unlikely until I realized that the connection was actually to do with karaoke. So that's, I think, the first mention in this video of the word karaoke but it'll be coming back later whether you like it or not but anyway let's just have a quick look at this one so i've been looking through the japanese auctions and i kept coming across eight track cartridges and i thought this is a bit odd why did eight track do so well in japan <laughs> Oh, there we go. 
Right, so we seem to have everything in here. If this registers anything, I'll be shocked, but uh, let's find out. Oh, flipping out, look. Good, that's crazy. <laughs> Your new electronically tuned radio with 8-track tape has many advanced features. That terrible rendition of Rocky was a very fortuitous event because, of course, you can't plan for something like this. It just happened that the cartridge had somehow got itself tangled up inside. And I recorded it as it was happening. Unfortunately, the volume was faulty on the device, which is why it was going up and down. But uh, I captured everything that was there and I played it over the end credits of the video as well. And I thought... Maybe this will go viral, that everyone will find it so amusing, but I don't think as many people found it as interesting as I did. Quite a few people said, could I upload the whole version of it played in that kind of wibbly-wobbly way? Well, I couldn't because it just happened that once. That's the thing with an 8-track. It, it plays and then it loops and then it's fine again. Um, so it, it's not something I, I created or I could recreate. It was just something that happened there and then at that moment and luckily i had the camera rolling that kind of things like that happen all the time when cameras aren't rolling it was just just uh, fit very nicely with the video though added a bit of uh, a comedy element to it um so moving on from that one the next one i just want to talk about a video where i was re-recording or blanking out on top of old cassettes since the price of cassettes has shot up so much for decent quality ones I thought it might be interesting just to show ways to erase old tapes so that you can use them again as new. I noticed the prices that people are asking for new old stock blank cassettes and they've really shot up in the last couple of years. This was £1.25, now it's 22 quid. How about just buying some used old cassettes? Now, of course, once you've got some used cassettes with recordings on them, you might want to just put them in your tape recorder and record things as they come along but then again you probably want to have them completely blank before you start or i always do because if you press pause after a recording and start again you might get a little bit of a snippet of what was on these previously right okay so let's just waz that through here that's it yeah there we go in out out the other side right pop it back in here play it's gone as easy as that now two things came off that one a lot of people were wondering why i bothered erasing them well the reason is really that i wanted to make that video about tape erasers so if i wasn't erasing anything the video wouldn't exist but yeah the, the point that people were saying was well why do you want to blank a tape off why don't you just re-record over it after all when you're re-recording over it you're erasing it anyway and the point i wanted to make was that well if you want to start off with a completely blank tape then you can fast forward anyway you can put a recording down you can pause you're never going to get the previous track bleeding through but they're not i mean it's personal preference but if i was recording on a tape i want a completely blank tape rather than having a tape that's got something already recorded on it just in case it does bleed through it's nice just to clean it off completely Another thing, though, that people often said was, you might have erased some valuable recordings. I, I think this must be an age thing, but there's a lot of people think that everything from the past is incredibly valuable. The tapes I was using were ones where people had recorded LPs. They'd rec there was one they'd recorded uh, Queen's Greatest Hits onto a tape, and I erased that one. Yeah, I could get Queen's Greatest Hits again. I could get it in flack or CD or stream it in numerous other ways so it's not like i've erased something valuable from the past i've erased somebody else's old recordings of something that you could record again and i could record better because they were done on a terrible machine it was all auto level control and dodgy anyway so yeah obviously i'm not going to go erasing anything that's incredibly valuable uh, but also it's very unlikely to find anything incredibly valuable on a on a cassette uh, sometimes you find some pretty good stuff though some albums that you might not have heard of it's worth listening to them and you might uh, find an artist that you are unfamiliar with it's always a good fun getting all the old cassettes off someone else or old mini discs i've picked up on so many artists and and uh, albums that i wasn't aware of just from getting other people's collections in fact down here somewhere i've got a um a load of mini discs that i bought from japan somebody's own collection and of course they're all recorded uh with goodness knows what on them i'm going to go through them one day but it'll take me quite a while i, I think i've got about 100 mini discs with uh recordings on of course probably a lot of them japanese artists i'd never better figure out uh moving on though um second most popular video of the year 
actually might be the first, uh, no, second by like a tiny little margin. We had the most popular one before, uh, which was the video now, but this is almost neck and neck and they might uh, overtake one another at certain points of the year. So uh, audio foolery, shaving CDs. The idea is that by using this, you can shave the edge of a compact disc to a 36 degree angle. And by doing that, you improve its sound quality. Bringing it in. And we can mark the edge of this with a Sharpie. And now in theory, this disc should be better than it was before. People seem to like that video. It wasn't the best one I've made by a long shot. Um, there was, there's been a lot going on behind the scenes this year. I'll talk more about that later on. But there's been times where I haven't been able to put as much effort as I'd like to into a video because other things have been taking precedence. Um, as it is, it, it was all right. I could have made it tighter. I could have edited it down better, uh, but it didn't harm its success. It's uh, been a very successful video. A lot of people just thought that device was ridiculous. I got some very strange emails from audiophile people after that one. People that had bought that product and were still swearing by it being like a, a useful device. And uh, I was trying to be polite in the video rather than just saying that this is complete nonsense. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I've never seen so many very, very strange emails, pages upon pages of tiny font ranting. <laughs> I mean, obviously I didn't read all the way through them because I've got a life, uh, but it, the people that wrote them, maybe they've got different priorities. But yeah, very, very odd. Um, you know, it's like I'm not allowed to have my own opinion about things. I've got to have their opinion about it. But uh, yeah, so I did that video and, it, and people seem to like it. And uh, I came back to that topic a couple of weeks later. Uh, but in the meantime, let's move on and talk about a giant boombox. And again, I think this is one of those ones that would end up being in those new wave toys collections of replicas if they carry on making them. Uh, this is the Sharp, is it the VZ2000? Anyway, it's this thing. Let's have a look. This is a Sharp VZ2000, also known as the VZ-V2 in Japan. It's gained a reputation as being one of the classic boom boxes of the early 1980s. I've got a speaker wire. I'm just trying to find the socket for it. We should be able to get these two halves apart now. Ooh, because just look at that. It works. I haven't broken it. It really does go quite loud. And that turntable is well isolated. Now, just a reminder, Links to all these videos will be in the video description. I might also try and pin them in the top comment if it lets me write a large enough comment. But yeah, if you want to see the full version of any of these, there'll be links below. Uh, this one, that video took me, I think it might have been three weeks. It was, it was a couple of weeks to put it together because I was waiting on bits and it was a very difficult thing to take apart. It was also very large. And once I'd took it apart, I'd used up all the space I had to shoot any more videos. So I couldn't like multitask and go and do something else. I got this big stupid thing taking up all this room. As it was, I'm glad I managed to get it working because if I hadn't got it working, no one would have wanted to see the video. Nobody likes to see repair videos where the repair is unsuccessful. And I've seen people say, oh no, I'd like to see that. There'll be people that say that, but you look at the viewing numbers, whenever I've done a video and I've said, oh, I couldn't really get it working properly. You know, nobody wants to know that one. They want, they want the success stories. Everyone likes a, a happy ending on the video. So, yeah, it was a happy ending, that one. And uh, after that, I got a bit overconfident. I'd done that one, and I mentioned in the video that there was a follow-up from Sharp, which looked a little bit simpler as a design. Uh, kind of neater, but maybe cheaper, easier for them to produce. After only perhaps a year and a half on the sale, that one was changed into this other version. Um, and I managed to find one of those for sale in really good condition. A uh, decent price. They said like untested and all this, that and the other. Uh, I thought, ah, oh, I'll, I'll be fine. So I got it and uh, they were able to be powered by three different ways. You could do a DC power supply, you could do batteries, you could do AC. And I went through all of them and the thing was dead. I just got a little bit of a flicker on the power at one, and I looked kind of inside it and it looks like it's probably suffered water damage. So I think it's probably unrepairable. 
uh, but I didn't go too far with it. I didn't take it all apart because if you saw that video, you'll notice, well, you'll remember that taking it apart was the major thing. That's what took me like a, a day or two to do. Uh, so I'd go through all that process and I'd probably find a dead device in the middle. So I've still got it. I've got it in storage. It looks nice. Just don't try and use it to do anything with it. It's a, a, an interesting prop. Uh, but yeah, uh, maybe at some point in the future, I might take another look at it, but I do suspect that it, that one is probably unrepairable. So I'm glad this one wasn't. Right, moving on. Um, karaoke. Yeah. Uh, almost the worst performing video of the year. Next to the bottom, I think, this one. If people see the word karaoke, they switch off. I'd imagine if I look back at the viewing figures for this video, it probably drops at this point because nobody, nobody likes karaoke. And I'm one of them. I don't like karaoke. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to do it. And you're thinking, well, hold on a minute, you keep doing karaoke in your videos. Yeah, because I, I'm terrible at it. And I think that's funny. But the thing that I find interesting is the tech, because it's like this whole area of tech of kind of almost games console type devices, a whole um, system with cartridges and goodness knows what else built around karaoke which we didn't see over here like a parallel universe of technology of interesting devices that i think are worth featuring for the technology side but yeah as far as karaoke goes no i don't want to hear it i don't want to do it i'm no good at it but i find the whole process fascinating so let's just have a look at this one very quickly today i'm going to be taking a look at this portable karaoke machine from yamaha yamaha ings shintojo One day wearing so many wares, so many chapeaux, and so many ties. Yeah, so that last sequence, I intended it to look sound pathetic and weird. I hope it did. I hope it came across the right way. The reason it was in black and white with that weird effect, by the way, well, I always intended to do it in black and white, but the camera turned out to be out of focus when I shot it. So I had to put an effect on top so you didn't notice that the focus was off because I didn't want to go and shoot it again. Uh, I did go and sit in that car park with my karaoke device plugged into the car stereo and, and sung songs for like five minutes and hoped that no one would come and wonder what the heck was going on. I've seen that clip reused since by people in, in these various videos where they compile things and it's kind of look at this guy into a bit weird type of thing. It's like, yeah, that was what I was supposed to be like. It was it was acting. Uh, the, I am weird, but I mean, that, not normally that weird. The next thing though, because again, people just turn off karaoke well they don't turn off they don't turn on in the first place needed something that was a little bit more successful so let's go back to the well of silly audio file devices that surely can't work under normal circumstances aluminium is not magnetic right so there you go case closed you can't magnetize a compact disc but as you'd imagine, the manufacturers of the compact disc demagnetizer have a different opinion about that. But just in case the ultramagnetic MCs aren't already magnetic enough, I took this a step further by standing a total of three magnets on top of the disc and then leaving it overnight. And there you go, that is our CD completely demagnetized. Yeah, okay. I did a better job of editing on that one than I did on the previous audio file type silly video. Um, I, it was a bit more condensed down, but it was repetitious. It was repeating a lot of the stuff from the previous in comparing the audio files because we know the audio is not affected by this magnetism device or anti-magnetism and I just proved that but there's only really one way to kind of prove it and it's the same technique I used to prove it on the previous one so the video got a bit repetitious. Uh, I do have another silly audio file type device which I do intend to show at some point and uh, I don't know how I'm going to show that in a video because that one uh, basically I don't think it does anything at all so it's hard to kind of debunk something that doesn't do anything in the first place. I haven't had a proper look at it yet, though. So that's something that we'll perhaps show in 2023. But again, another successful video. Not massively, not the same way as the CD shaver. I think that one caught people's attention more than the magnet one. I had, again, loads of weird emails on that one. And people say, well, clearly you didn't put the uh, good quality magnets on it. And therefore, that's why it couldn't be demagnetized. So it's like, 
strange, strange thinking. Uh, am I thinking outside the box? Thinking on another planet. Uh, anyway, moving on. Net mini disc in 2022. This video will be out of date in a few days. Um, I'm not going to keep changing the title on it though, but yeah, this was a video where I was showing the ways that net mini disc can now be used with a computer through uh, web based interfaces with web apps. And uh, it was just a bit of a demonstration of various different things. And I think it helped quite a lot of people. I've had lots of people get back to me and say that they found this one useful. And I was just showcasing some things that were out there that people might not be aware of. And uh, let's just have a quick look. Okay, so I'm going to be using these four devices. This is a CD mini disc combo unit. It can copy from the CD to the mini disc. Now, since the last time I looked at this app, it's been updated. There's now a version called Web Mini Disc Pro that adds more features. It allows people to get the audio off their old mini discs and into their computers without having to resort to just recording it across. Now, overall, that video I think was quite worthwhile to make because it helped a lot of people out. It spread awareness of the features that were in the software that had just been added. In fact, some of them were added during the course of while I was making the video with regard to the ability to download audio from your existing mini discs using a variety of NetMD machines and get that audio into your computer without having to re-record it across. A feature that previously had only been restricted to the MZRH1, which had become very expensive as a result. Now, as usual, I got the criticism that I'd raise the prices of NetMD machines. Oh, typical tech moans, put the prices up again. It's a tech mode effect. Well, yeah, uh, the video was intended for people who already had this equipment and were using it in a way that they hadn't been able to use it for years with their computers and this uh, net-based software. And most importantly, being able to get their old recordings off. I can't imagine many people wanted to get a new NetMD machine to put music on to go around listening to. I, I, it was really aimed at people who already had the equipment. But yeah, if you see prices going up the day the video comes out, well, that's because people just bought the thing that was on eBay that day that looked the best. If there's a player on there that's nice and shiny, new in box, and uh, a video comes out, yeah, a few people might try out bidding each other for it. Well, don't go and buy it that day. Buy it two months later. Prices will be back to normal. Or... If you want, uh, go on Patreon, support the channel, and you'll see the video early, and you'll better get in there before everyone else. But yeah, just don't go and buy stuff on the day that everyone else has wanted to buy it. That's crazy talk. Moving on. A new old thing, the new giant Nixie clock, an absolutely beautiful device. Just have a look at this. Look at that. Wow. And just think, every element here has been handmade. Every digit inside those tubes has been placed there with a pair of tweezers. Yeah, an absolutely gorgeous device. One of the most beautiful pieces of equipment that I've seen in years. And yet it's coming from a place that's suffering the most unimaginable problems. Ukraine. The chap there, Igor, who makes these tubes, I just don't know how he's, he's going about this. It just seems a, a unbelievable that somebody could be working under those conditions and still able to produce something just so beautiful and then also get it shipped over to me here in the UK. And I know off the back of that video, quite a lot of people have gone and ordered stuff from Mill Clock, the people who are making these. And I really hope that helps them out because... Uh, over the years, I, the, the first thing I ever thought about when I heard about what was going on, what was happening to Ukraine, when it turned up in the news for the first time, the first thought that entered my head is, I thought, flipping heck, I wonder how Igor's going on at Mill Clock. Honestly, that was the very first thing I thought about, because I, I, I have sort of connections all over the place as a result of doing this, and I've made uh, friends, I'd, I'd like to think, all around the world and like that was the, the first person I thought of obviously I mean that's a bit selfish because it, it affects so many people but you know, on a personal level that was just the first thing I thought of I wasn't thinking about oh I hope I could get a new Nixie clock I just thought oh, I hope he's all right you know anyway so uh, moving on from that um, something a little bit more frivolous a, a, a box with flashing lights in it the light let me show you the light. So 
surprisingly popular, that video. I've become known for featuring music visualizers over the years, but uh, the videos have had a waning level of interest. So I was surprised with how many people wanted to see that particular one. It is quite unusual though. Maybe it will lead some people onto creating versions of that themselves. It seems in a way quite a simple device. And I can imagine modern technology, if you could get hold of a Raspberry Pi or something nowadays, you could produce something really quite interesting using the same kind of idea. Now, new technology in 2022 has been a little bit thin on the ground. I obviously follow various technology blogs and uh, follow channels on YouTube, even read magazines, although I'm now doing it, of course, virtually on a tablet and things. But uh, it seems like everyone's really struggling to feature new gadgets. There's channels that regularly used to feature new tech and now they've started delving into old tech just to have something to to fill in the space uh, so it's nice in a year where it's been a bit of a desert for interest in new tech to see a company come out with some interesting old tech but new again and do it right i'm talking about the new sound burger the new limited edition 2022 Audio Technica Sound Burger. The packaging resembles something more like you get a bottle of whiskey in. That's it. Take it Mine is number 196 out of 7,000. All right, here goes. That's what's inside it. So yeah, if you did want to replace the belt, pretty easy job. Put the screwdriver in and see if I can get the speed right. So yeah, got the speed perfect. Don't pay any scalpers ridiculous amounts of money if they manage to get one out of this first batch. Just hold on and I'm quite sure it will reappear. They'd be daft not to try and sell more of these. And I'm gonna stand by what I said at the end there. I wouldn't pay a lot of money for one of these. It's not a premium product. The price that it was coming out at was very sensible and was the right price, but I wouldn't pay any more than that. And I do suspect that it's going to come back in a different form, slightly different form, probably a different colour without the limited edition plaque on the back in 2023. I still know nothing about this. I've heard nothing, but I just think that it makes sense. And fingers crossed that I'm right. More often right than wrong. Well, you know. Um, moving on now, Micro MV. This is one of the videos right from the end of the year now we get into. And Micro MV, the smallest video cassette format, that which was in a camcorder that I bought. There's a whole story in the video that goes around this one. It was a bit of a story video rather than just featuring a piece of tech because it was featuring a lot of background and why I got involved in this and also how this camcorder ended up making me a person who then went on to become a sort of a YouTube channel that was moderately successful and all down to me buying a camcorder on one particular day in a supermarket. Uh, but let's just have a look at this for a second. The smallest video cassette format ever made. The camera really does fit in a jeans pocket. Of course, it helps that these aren't skinny jeans, but it also helps that the camera is nicely rounded off on the corners. I absolutely love using this. It just felt right in the hand. Everything was perfect. Now, there's often bits in videos that people want to know more about. In this one, I couldn't tell you any more about it, but people wanted to see more of the Elvis in a shopping mall. Now, I found this on a tape that I was copying across. It was a shopping mall in Miami. I have no recollection of filming this myself, but I just thought I'd show you the whole clip because I did cut it a little bit short in the video, but in reality, you've seen the best part of it anyway. But just for the sake of completeness, here's the whole clip, everything I know about it, of Elvis in a shopping mall. Now you'll notice he was using one of those sharp view cams there. For a while, those were really quite popular. Particularly, I noticed 
in the US. I very rarely saw them in the UK, but when I went on holiday to the US, there were quite often people with the view cams. Uh, it just seemed to be something that appealed with a large screen on it. Of course, uh, the size was an issue for portability, but at the time it came out, camcorders were quite bulky anyway, but other than the one that I had with me, of course. Another thing that came off that video that was I thought particularly interesting, although I didn't talk about it very much, I maybe skirted over it, was the fact that these tapes had a tiny little memory chip in them that was, for me, one of the earliest uses that I've encountered of an NFC technology. I believe the mini DV tapes had a similar technology that had less memory storage on it. Micro MV increased the amount of storage and depending upon what I read it was either 64 kilobits or 64 kilobytes. Nobody was able to narrow that down depending upon which article you read or which spec sheet. But anyway there was a certain amount of memory on this little NFC chip that then got read by your camera when you inserted it. And when you think this is 20 years ago and uh, this memory chip would have been in models that came out a couple of years even before them. It's a pretty early use really for NFC. So let me just show you this clip. Now inside this cassette, there's a memory chip somewhere. I've never looked inside one. I'm gonna do that today for the first time. Let's just take everything out of here. Ah, there it is. So that is our little chip. It looks like around the outside of there is the antenna for communicating. And that's a little NFC type chip on the other side. Now, I'm sure I'll hear from people that say, well, that's not an early use of NFC. NFC has been around for years. In fact, George Stevenson used it in the rocket. But for me, on a consumer device, I think that was the first time I've encountered NFC. And after that video, we're just moving on quickly. I was away for most of December. I was on holiday and I put together three quick videos, all reviews of uh, modern products that I could put out while I was away. I had them scheduled for release while I was away. I'd shown them earlier to people on Patreon so they could just check that I hadn't made any massive mistakes in them. Uh, and then while I was away, I scheduled one to come out each Saturday. And uh, whilst they weren't the kind of videos that would change the world, uh, whatever comments people put under them, complaining about this, that, and the other, doesn't matter. I was sat on a cruise ship somewhere uh, around the Canary Islands, I think, enjoying the sun and uh, the uh, all-inclusive drinks so it didn't matter but uh, yeah I, I needed a bit of a break at the end of the year and uh, I think I'll best explain what's been going on behind the scenes because it, 2022 has not been a good year for me. Okay well the year started off with a real highlight when I got mentioned or at least the channel did in the Beano comic. I used to read this every week so perhaps the mid-1980s never missed a copy used to get all the annuals and things so to actually have the Techmo name, the channel name mentioned in the Beano was, um, was a massive honour really. I, I, I intended to write to them to thank them for bringing it up. Um, but then things took a bit of a turn sort of behind the scenes. Uh, my mother died uh, a couple of weeks later. I think I managed to mention the Beano thing too, which was nice. Um, but before she went, but uh, yeah, I mean, she was elderly, but you know, it's, it's always upsetting, of course, when a, when a parent dies. Um, but I, um, I think I mentioned this to her because she was the one that always used to go and buy me the Beano every week, you know, when I was a kid. And I think she used to read it every now and then as well. You know, she, I, I got my sense of humour from my mum. Uh, in fact, I got pretty much all the sort of personality traits from my mother rather than my father. Uh, nice chat, but I just, it doesn't, you know, it's mostly my mum who's uh, like all the kind of weird quirkiness. And uh, so that was, that was upsetting. It also was very complicating because my mother was looking after my father. My father can't walk anymore due to, I don't know, old age. Um, so she was doing all the kind of shopping, cooking, all the rest of it. And now, of course, he was left on his own. So now it's down to me to try and get him into a, a care home. Also sorting out all the stuff to do with my mum's will and getting money moved from here to there and solicitors and all this kind of stuff. And there's been a heck of a lot of stuff like that behind the scenes. You don't realise the amount of admin involved in, in somebody's death until you try and get involved in it. And then it took up a lot of time. Now, remember, people are expecting a video to come out every week. And I get people going, where's this week's video? Why is it late? Or why is this week's video not so good? I'm unsubscribing. This channel's gone downhill. It's rubbish. All this in, in amongst this, um, um, you know, bury my mum type of thing. Well, I'm not physically doing it. 
cremated. But you know what I mean? All the stuff that goes around that kind of time in your life. It's uh, It was a lot to, to deal with. And I, I spent the rest of the year still trying to deal with it. In fact, you know, when somebody said... Um, I'm unsubscribing, this channel's rubbish or something. I, I, I wrote back and said, I had soup for lunch. And they went, what? I said, oh, I thought we were just sharing information that wasn't of any use to the other person. On top of all that, I should put that to one side. Uh, one thing that often gets, I see regularly in the comments, is people saying, blow your nose. Uh, you, know, what, you, you need to clear your nose. I can't watch your videos because... Well, it's quite upsetting because I don't want to talk like this either. I don't want to talk blocked up. I, I've got various medical problems. I'm going to lay them out here now. This is the only time I'll do this for people because I don't want to talk about this all the time. When I got to 40, I got type 1 diabetes. And people say, oh, type 1, don't you mean type 2? No, type 1. Late uh, diagnosis. Probably had it for years, but they finally figured it out when I was uh, 40, just a couple of days before my birthday. Everything from then started going downhill. I started gaining weight because of the diabetes and insulin and all the rest of it. You can't exercise the same. That's one issue. I can kind of manage that. Asthma turns up, I can manage that, I've got stuff for that. Another thing that came off it though is uh, that growing polyps, nasal polyps. Now it's not a very nice thing to talk about, but basically growths inside your sinuses. And this is what's affecting the speech, the, the, the nasal thing. And I've had them cut out three times under general anaesthetic and they won't do it anymore. They're, they can't do because uh, as a, one of the uh, treatments for this is to give you loads of steroids. The steroids affected the vision in one of my eyes. I am now almost blind in one eye. If the other eye was the same as that, I would not be able to drive, read a computer, read a phone, do anything that I'm doing. So basically I'm relying almost entirely on one eye and this one just for peripheral vision. So I can see that, but if I put it there, the hands just kind of gray in front of my face. So that has caught, they won't now do any more of these operations on the nasal things because it risks going too near the optic nerve and they don't want to risk completely blinding me. Uh, with the nasal polyps, the growth inside the nasal passages and all the rest of it, it that's what mean, meant that I've lost my sense of smell, I lost my sense of taste and they've been gone there for a number of years. On top of that, these growths are still carried on and now they start to go across my uh, eustachian tubes, across the ears, which is what's caused the hearing loss over the last year. Since they won't do any more operations, I managed to get on a medical trial this year and it was a trial for a new drug that was hopefully going to reduce these things down, dissolve them since they can't do the operation. And that meant going to the hospital once every two weeks for a series of injections, our various different measurements, keeping a diary of the uh, medical things. All that. So there's, this is on top of everything else that's going on. So every two weeks I'm spending an afternoon in the uh, hospital. And then, uh, so that went off for all year. Unfortunately, the medical trial was unsuccessful. It didn't do anything at all. Uh, I'm hoping to go on another medical trial in 2023, which will be kind of a similar thing, uh, but I'm working on it. So all the people say, blow your nose, know, sort yourself out. I can't do with your voice, all the rest of it. It's like, yeah, I'm trying my best. I, I really am, but I, you know, I, I'm relying on medical professionals. So for me to get out as many videos as I have this year has been a bit of a miracle. They've not all been good though. There's been quite a bit of filler in there. And whenever there's a video comes out and you think, well, this isn't a very good video. It's not as good as one of the other videos. There's a reason behind it. It's all I can get out that week. That's about as good as I've got to do. Uh, also, people often ask about where's the Muppets. The Muppets used to feature at the end of the video. Where are they? Uh, I, I mentioned before in the past that when you feature them in videos, sometimes it causes issues with the video not being flagged as for children, but it's featuring puppets and YouTube associates puppets with children and you're getting all sorts of trouble there. I was going to put them out on Patreon only as a Patreon extra, but I can't think of anything funny to say. I've run out of funny ideas for them. There's only so many things that two things sitting at a table can say to each other about YouTube and the internet and all that with a limited number of words because unfortunately I'm not very good at the puppeteer. I get cramps. I can only say about three or four words each. Now, also, the place where they were sitting was commandeered during the event because the missus had to work from home as an office. And since then, it's been re... Uh, things have been moved around. There's been a desk put in and all of their, their location no longer exists. It's a combination of things. But the main one is I just can't think of anything for them to do or say, and I don't have the time. Add that one on as well. That's like the fifth thing. So there's a number of reasons why they aren't appearing. And as I say, I've had a very busy 2022 behind the scenes been an absolute nightmare of a year for one reason or another health wise family wise admin wise it's it's just amazing that i've got anything done at all but a lot of it isn't up to the quality that i would have wanted and this is what i want to say in 2023 
I'm going to be reducing down the amount of videos I put out. So if you're expecting a video every week at a certain time, it's not going to happen anymore. I'm going to put them out as and when they're ready. I don't know how often that's going to be, uh, but I can't keep going at this pace because it's it's literally killing me. And also I just keep getting heavier and heavier. I need to get out and exercise more. I also need to read upon various different things. I want to gain some more knowledge. I want to learn some things. I want to, there's a lot of things I want to do. And um, I can't just spend all my time sitting looking at this, which is pretty much what I've done in 2022 other than all the other stuff that's been interrupting it. So that is all the background on what's been going on. I wanted you to know that, um, but this is the last I'm going to speak of it. I'm not looking for sympathy or anything else, but I just wanted to say like everyone on YouTube that you watch and I watch and you're thinking, why isn't there a video this week? There's probably a reason. They've got lives, they're real people, they've got stuff going on. All I'd say is just be patient with people give people a little bit of time they try their best nobody wants to put out a rubbish video but sometimes they might not be able to put out the, the things that they want to put out to the quality that they want because of time constraints and other constraints so please bear that in mind right now moving on uh, into 2023 as i say i'm going to be reducing down the number of videos i put out that's my intention uh, but i just wanted to say that uh, there are extra videos that you might not get to see when i I'll put videos out on Patreon as and when I've got enough to say to add into an update video. I've been putting out update videos throughout the year. Sometimes these are quite long. They might be up to an hour uh, where I just chat about various things in much the same way I've been doing in the last few minutes here. It's not to everyone's taste, but if you're a Patreon supporter, you understand that these things are a little bit of behind the scenes, a bit more honest. The Patreon people have been very supportive to me, not just financially. Uh, Patreon, I make sure it's on the lowest tier possible, which is, I think, a dollar a month. I also make sure it's got the highest discount possible, which I think you can get like a year for 20% off or something. So it's like a, the smallest amount of contribution that's possible. I always want the videos to be free on YouTube, the main videos, and uh, they're not like you don't have to, you could just watch them, watch the adverts, or you can get YouTube Premium, which is something I'd very much recommend everyone get. You don't have to see any of the horrible adverts. Yeah, there's all these ad blockers and stuff, but if you get YouTube Premium, I still get some money from YouTube Premium. In fact, I get more money from a YouTube Premium subscriber per video than I would if they'd watched the adverts. So it's a win-win. Anyway, that is it for 2022's Roundup video. I hope you enjoyed some of this and I'd like to thank you for all your help and support and I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and let's all hope that 2023 is a lot better than 2022. <laughs>